Mr. and Mrs. Olson Perry, Bev and Beverly Perry, excuse me. Um, Mr. Perry, excuse me, Mrs. Perry's first Lithonia finest pianist gave each hymn vigor and always found creative ways to fill the church with glorious sounds while Mr. Perry articulated excellence through their speech and repeated words of admonition to the young aspiring musicians. This first selection section is dedicated to the Perrys and all who are part of the trio's church community. Hear now the Wilson Trio.
Hello, everyone. A special welcome from us, the Wilson Trio. We are so glad you are here, and we are going to solicit your help for this next selection. So I'm going to invite a special guest to lead us in singing the first verse and chorus of Blessed Assurance because it gives the message of what we do, praising our Savior all the day long. And it will lead right into our, the arrangement we're playing of this selection. That special guest is none other than our father, Cliff Wilson. You can sing, right? I know you can. Oh, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a taste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, I've washed in his blood. Oh, this is my story, this is my song, I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Oh, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Thank you. 
How wonderful. So in this next section, identity, you will hear how the trio became more attuned to who they are as black young musicians. A couple years into their musical beginnings, the trio would attend summer music festivals every year to learn with and from other brilliant musicians. It was in these summer experiences that they discovered something unique. They were, there were not many people who looked like them studying the music they performed. Excuse me. Dania and Danielle had the privilege of joining the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra Talent Development Program an organization that supports aspiring Black and Latino classical musicians. There, they learned with and from other families and professionals how to navigate a field in which they are prone to face discrimination and exclusion. Another affirming part of their journey was being a part of the Greater Atlanta Adventist Academy's choir. As high schoolers, under the direction of organist and pianist Luther Washington II. They learn not only how to sing, but how to express the emotions of black choral repertoire, including Negro spirituals, melodies formed under the weight of brutal marginalization. Mr. Washington's commitment to detail in each lesson he gave along with the provision of performance opportunities, helped the Wilson Trio grow in talent and character. The pieces you will soon hear include arrangements of spirituals by Afro-British composer Samuel Coleridge Taylor, who was also a conductor and political activist, hailed as a musical genius by 20th century critics. This section, the second section, is dedicated to Mr. Washington. Is he here? Will you please stand? <laughs> Mr. Washington and the GAAA community and the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra's Talent Development Program the Wilson Trio dedicates this section of music.
Danielle moved to the Midwest for her studies, and Dania attended school away as well. Even before separating by location, each sibling started their own experiences guided by their individual instructors. Their private teachers, Justin Bruns, if you're here, please stand. We'll applaud him. Joel Dallo, if you're here, please stand. And Shirley Eyrick, if you're here, please stand. And others equip them with skills to be excellent no matter the status quo. As such, this third section is dedicated to those individuals. In this section titled, Separation, we will hear from each of them 
starting with Danielle Wilson. So now we get to have a little more intimate time with our artists. So I have a few questions that I will present um, to each of the members of the Wilson Trio um, after they have given us their special rendition. And so Danielle, so we heard earlier how in your formative years, the inspiration of your parents led to the special learning of different instruments for you and your siblings. Tell us, if you will, when did you fall in love with music? I can't pinpoint the exact moment. <laughs> and I thought of this question for a while. I think I liked music before I started playing the cello, oh. but I liked playing cello music in particular. I believe I started to really find um, a connection to it when I was around 14 years old and I heard the Bach double violin concerto. And yes, it's not a cello piece, but it was, it's still like something part of what I play. And that made me think of how much bigger this world was and why I wanted to be part of it. Ah, 
So now we heard also how and why she fell in love with the cello. That's excellent. We noticed that it is safeguarded as it should be. So um, another question. Currently, you play for the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra, which clearly remained in your view. Throughout the years, as you've gone through your studies and such, and is considered a significant accomplishment. So how do you interpret this opportunity? It reminds me that I can't determine everything that's happening to me. <laughs> ah. Yes, I, I don't think that this opportunity was something I expected to have at this point in my life. And so I feel really blessed. But it's also something I feel like I can celebrate as well as everyone who poured into me can celebrate with me because a part of why I'm here is included um, was something that people dreamed of and why they invested in me in the first place. So it, I feel really proud, but also it's unexpected. <laughs> um, well, I know that you're a great addition to the orchestra, and so thank you. Um, so here is the third and final question that's been crafted for you. So those who know you would say that you're reserved and unassuming yet with a spirit of adventure. So tell us, Danielle, from who or from where does your spirit get fed? Who or where? That is, I don't know if I have a who or a where, but I can say what, when I got a taste of what it's like to try to break out of my shell, it's kind of addictive because you learn, when you take a risk, whether it goes well or, or bad, you feel like you learn something and you want to try it again because the possibility of, of getting better is always there. So I think that's what attracts me to, you know, being un, unassuming. <laughs> and adventurous, yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Danielle Wilson. And at this time, we'll welcome to the stage, Daniel Wilson.
All right. Dania, thank you for that. Scott. So by now, I'm sure you know the first question I'm going to ask you. Um, however, for the sake of redirection and refocus, we know it was the desire of your parents to expose and develop within you and your siblings a skill in music, specifically instruments. So tell us, when did you fall in love with the violin and your love for music or vice versa? My love for music, I would say, started before violin. So I loved music as long as I could remember. Um, I was surrounded by it at church. There was children's choir, youth choir, mass choir. First Lectonia had everything. So I just loved being involved in music. My first music teacher, Miss Beeman, had us kindergartners singing with all the older children. So I really enjoyed just hearing gospel music especially. Now with violin, if I could be completely honest, um, I fell in love with it two years ago. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I have always liked the violin. It's been near and dear to my heart, but I've been frustrated trying to be like the top violinist in the world. Um, and it wasn't until two years ago, isolation and everything, God was like, I can use you through this, but I need Dania. I don't need anyone else. I need Dania. So that's when I fell in love with it. Thank you. All right. So... You're a talented young woman with a far reaching vision for creating great awareness and opportunity for young innovative talent within this genre of arts. Tell us to date, what has been your greatest achievement and what do you want to be your most noteworthy accomplishment? My greatest achievement, I would say, is keeping God in the picture. Um, yes, it's, it's not even on my own strength. The Holy Spirit always just has been encouraging me throughout my journey to keep him or seek him for what I want to do. And from there, he has opened the door for me to revive a music program in an underserved community for children free of charge. Um, been led to open up inclusive initiatives in leading arts institutions. And I mean, I've been able to take the big leap in uh, working at a financial firm. So there's been so many blessings. And just from the spaces I've worked in, I've been very concerned about, first of all, space. When I'm teaching young children, sometimes I'm in classrooms that's designed for a whole other program. So it kind of limits what we can do with the children. And then also, if there is an organization, they have their stipulations, they have their rules and whatnot. So we got to co to comply with those. So ideally, I just have a strong desire to create and manage a facility, a space that is hyper-local in a community that doesn't have quick access or convenient access to quality arts and music. And in that space, young innovative minds, they can learn and grow, but also those in the community can be involved and experience something that they don't have to travel hours to get to. So that's my dream. And if a, if a community is thriving, I believe it's because the arts in that community is thriving. Wow, wow. To the community that will experience Dania, watch out, here she comes. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, okay, so this is your third and final question. Okay, those who know you would say that you're methodical, well-spoken, and well-dressed. Right? <laughs> so... Um, from whom or from where did you get your sense of style? These fun I facts, think I should don't be careful. you love them? I should be careful of how I answer this. <laughs> um, but there was a lady at my at first I told you a long time ago. She pulled my sister and I. Her name is Sister Lorna Thomas. And she told my sister and I, y'all need to dress well because you are 
daughters of the king of kings. So I always kept that with me. And I get it from both sides, to be honest. Uh, my grandma was a seamstress. And my mom, she has two sisters, two of my aunts, Auntie Natasha and Auntie Thais. They have a splendid style and they have ways of putting their style to match them. So ever since I was younger, I was like, I want to keep doing that. <laughs> well, there you have it. Daniel Wilson, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. So now, so at this time, at this time, we're going to invite uh, Cliff Jr., affectionately known as CJ, to the stage. You nicely played. So, CJ, so your first question will be the same like that of your sisters. Okay. And um, again, appreciating all that your parents um, did to inspire and to cultivate your palette from music, 
can you tell us when did you first fall in love with music and more specifically when did you fall in love with the piano uh, that's a, every answer i'm sure has been very hard to calculate that particular moment but um i will say before the music appreciation for it came it came the, the social aspect of it we went to music camps and uh it was up till I kind of were able to interact with kids who had that similar uh, attention to music and appreciation for it that I kind of saw it from a different light and also just different genres and uh, you know the whole gamut of what exists in the musical world. So uh, it wasn't until a little older that I actually liked uh, to be about it. You know, piano is a very lonely instrument sometimes. <laughs> so when you do get a chance to interact with other like-minded people, then you kind of gain to the appreciation from different perspectives. Thank you, thank you. All right. Now, unlike your sisters who pursued their studies in music and the arts, you studied computer science and computer engineering, yet you play with such eloquence, demonstrating a clear love for the passion of music. So where, and, and you know, were you challenged with choosing between your love for music and technology? And how did you feed and maintain your passion for playing the piano? I, uh, that's a tough question, regardless of how familiar I am with it. But uh, it was a bit of a struggle. But once I grew up to, you know, explore more of the engineering side of my life, it kind of had a weird bridge in a sense. And uh, I didn't feel like it needed to be a tug of war anymore. Um, there is a certain element of performing or playing music that kind of allows you to think differently, allows you to process things in, in inter interesting ways, so to speak. But uh, I learned that there is more of a fact that I can have that ebb and flow where, you know, you have that analytical mindset when you approach certain things, but you can also balance it. And of course, you know, sometimes you're playing a song or a piece and you want to figure out why am I not getting this right? And you go into the analytical part and you diagnose it. What did I do wrong? What can I do differently? And, you know, you just kind of realize the thinking that I have from this particular aspect of my life works here, vice versa. But when it comes to the other side, sometimes you think of unorthodox means to fix a computer or anything of that nature, and it kind of helps just diversify and also bring things together in that, you know, seemingly uh, dichotomy, you know, of options there. Interesting, interesting. Thank you for that. All right, so those who know you would say that you've become quite the travel enthusiast. Um, so from who or from where did you get your spirit for exploration? I only been to one place, really. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I, I do aspire. I do travel at least within the state, but I did have the opportunity to to go overseas for a little while, and uh, that was the first time I actually got to like spend an extended period away. I was homeschooled, so I think just being home, being in a familiar setting, you kind of yearn for a little bit of a difference. Okay. And uh, thankfully, that opportunity kind of opened up that avenue for me. So uh, that that's kind of where it came from. Nothing. Nothing too complicated there. But it hasn't ended there, has it? No, of oh, okay. course not. All I think right. once you get that bug, you kind of start to think about how many sky miles you can steal from people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is your closing question. Okay. You get a fourth question and the closing question for you. So what is the degree of pride that you're feeling this evening playing alongside your sisters for this significant occasion? Uh, that's a tough one again, actually, because um, they're more so a, a big motivator for me when it comes to music. And I was able to kind of see their journey and how they progressed, you know, and I was always proud to take them to lessons, take them to orchestra practice, whatever it was. But um, I've seen them excel and, you know, play in various spaces in front of different audiences. And uh, I know what they've accomplished, I know what they've put in. So for me, it's more so like I just got to make sure and, and continue to be there with them in some capacity, get a part of that magic a little bit. And um, of course, I'm super proud of what they've accomplished. 
And I'm just happy to kind of, you know, be there to be a part of everything that they're doing and learn from them, play alongside them, and uh, hopefully continue to help them build their repertoire, build their portfolio, and build their reach in some form or fashion. So, yeah, no words can really describe it. I'm super proud of them. Awesome. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, CJ Wilson. So at this time, um, we have um, another treat for you all. Day ones are day ones for a reason. The Wilson Trio has day ones who they not only knew from church, but also took lessons with them, performed alongside them at concerts, attended summer camps, and did the whole nine yards with them. One of them is Mr. Seth Durand. He's a pianist an arranger and a singer. I guess you can just say he's multi-talented, who has taken his musical gifts to great heights. Another noteworthy in the day ones is talented artist Shalana Chin King, affectionately known as Shay. Shalana is a lyric coloratura soprano. She also started sharing her talents from a young age. Since opening for Richard Smallwood at age four, she has shared stages with many other gifted artists and instrumentalists. Today, we will hear Seth and Shay's arrangement at Look at the World. It is a Am I on? Good morning. Are we on? Oh, oh it's me. Well, oh, there you are. You are. Mm -hmm. It is an honor and a privilege to be with you. Have you been enjoying this beautiful music this afternoon? Hasn't it been beautiful? We're so glad to be here with you. We have been talking in our family about creation and how God makes all things. I wonder if sometimes we miss the beauty that is the earth, the flowers, the sky, how the sun rises and sets and how the sky looks magically different because our creator God has done something amazing once again. Take a moment if you will and think, breathe in and breathe out. Look at the beautiful world around us that God has made for his people. Look at the world, everything all around us. Look at the world and marvel every day. Look at the world, so many joys and wonders, so many miracles along. Thank you. 
forth fruit and flower. Look at the sky, the sunshine and the rain. Are you enjoying yourself? Isn't it awesome? In this last section called Blood, Sweat, and Tears, the trio would like to pay tribute to the people who have supported them from the very beginnings of their lives and continue to be their most avid supporters to this day, their family. Their parents, Cliff and Deborah Wilson sacrificed much 
to provide a high quality, well-rounded musical education. Being Caribbean immigrants, they had limited familiarity with the ins and outs of the world of music they appreciated so highly. However, they were determined to immerse their children into it as much as possible. When they first purchased a home in Georgia, one of the very first items they put in the living room was an upright piano. In early family photos, you'll learn that it was present before seating furniture, and it is still in regular use to this day. It took a lot of patience and stubbornness for these parents to push through the years of lessons, hours of practice, and frequent long-distant drives to various rehearsals, coachings, classes, and recitals. When they saw opportunity for their children to advance in their musical, excuse me, musical journey through advance and attendance at summer music camps, they pulled their community together for free concerts by the trio in early years, in part to help raise money for tuition. The second selection will be a combination of their parents' favorite hymns and Abide With Me also honoring loved one laws. Before I continue, I'm going to ask for Deborah and for Cliff Wilson to please stand and so that we can appreciate them. <laughs> Further speaking of supportive family, also includes aunts, uncles, cousins, and grandparents. For those of you that are here, would you please stand? Aunts and uncles, I saw you. And we celebrate those that are here virtually. From their first concert, there was always family present to support, especially with a recording device to capture the moments. To this day, they show up wherever the trio plays, even without advance notice, expressing continued appreciation for their music. For this concert, some have traveled to hear them play, and others have dedicated their time to join this concert via live stream. Here now, a tribute to the family as the Wilson Trio return to this stage to play the newest selections from their repertoire. Hear them.
Thank you all once again. At this time, we do want to acknowledge uh, our family that will be watching and present here. We recently encountered a loss, so we'd like to dedicate the remainder of this program to the Daniels family. Thank you.
Before our final selection, we would like to recognize a few individuals. Now, if you are formally or presently a member of First Lithonia SDA Church and the Pillars of Faith SDA Church, please stand. Okay, quickly. Hey. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your generous support and commitment to our musical ministry. Mr. and Mrs. Perry, please come forward. Thank you for being an example of excellence and dedicated passion for musical ministry. We also thank you for being our musical parents. We call them Mama and Papa Perry. I would now like to recognize people who became a part of our journey as teachers or through the Atlanta Symphony's Talent Development Program. Um, first, I would like to ask two people to come forward, Mr. Luther Washington II and Joel Dallow. So as you heard in the earlier in the remarks, so before you be seated, oh, <laughs> I wanted to say thank you for all you've done for us. I know we met in high school while we were in high school, but you all have kept up with us since then. And we are here because of all that you poured into us. So thank you very much. And next, I would like to ask two very special ladies to come forward, Mrs. Azara Hill and Melinda Logan. So as they're coming forward, these names were not mentioned, but I would like to let you know who they are. Mrs. Zira Hill is the founder of the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra's Talent Development Program. And yes. Thank you. And Ms. Melinda Logan has been a volunteer for as long as I've been there from a long time ago. I'll say that the Talent Development Program is celebrating its 30th anniversary this season. So the work that these two wonderful, amazing women have done is beyond this room, beyond this city. And we're so grateful for what you have done and continue to do. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. But I just want you to know that you are the answer to many prayers. For 30 years, we had been working to change the face of the symphony, and it has happened through you. So we say tonight, to God be the glory. And of course, we'd also like to thank our beloved family, those who are here, those who are viewing. Like was mentioned earlier, you all have been day one supporters. And we want to also extend a small token of our appreciation, which is not really representative of the whole, to our parents. 
Deborah Moore Wilson and Cliff Wilson Sr. Yes, you all were the catalyst for what we see here today. And uh, we just know that there is a lot of sacrifices, there's a lot of time and dedication, and we want to make sure that that is acknowledged and we let you know that we greatly appreciate it. Thank you. One thing I failed to mention is that as you heard Mrs. Hill explain, right now I'm playing in a section with my high school teacher. So that's part of what makes it special, the whole situation is not only um, seeing the fulfillment of what they've worked hard for, but being able to sit alongside someone who has taught me. So I wanted to make that clear. <laughs> Next steps. So one of the most frequent questions we receive is regarding our future as a trio. A large chunk of our existence was spent living in different cities, as you heard, and now that we've been back in the same place for a little over a year and have gotten back into the groove of getting to know each other individually as musicians more closely and regularly, we have been thinking of expanding our repertoire. The primary purpose of this evening's program is to honor those who have played pivotal roles in our musical journey, but it would be a mistake not to share what we plan to do next and how you can respond to that moving forward. We weren't sure what turnout we would have for this event, but over the last couple of weeks, we realized our impact is bigger than we knew. We are young, we are black, and we have worked very hard to get here. And I'm sure you would like to see examples of communities sharing this type of experience more often. Moving forward, we plan to dedicate our time and ministry toward a project that encompasses commissioning new arrangements and selections for publishing, sharing, and possibly recording. Throughout our journey, we have met and collaborated with phenomenal faith-based composers, arrangers, and other young musicians who express similar sentiments of bringing newness to music for worship. Some of them are, have been on stage today, you heard Seth. And you also saw Xavier who's been turning pages. He is also connected. <laughs> Our goal is to create a body of musical repertoire that more closely represents who we are, especially based on the journey we have shared with you today. There are many more ways to enjoy spiritual songs and hymns, and we see the piano trio as a versatile vehicle to communicate them to you. Yes, we are church-raised and classically trained, but we want to explore additional innovative methods of playing this music through working with other instrumentalists, composers, arrangers, and even conductors. This project is more than simply finding a studio and recording a few songs. It is the development of a musical community who seeks to put their talents together and move forward with God's work. Creating, publishing, and collaborating takes time, and yes, a good deal of resources. So we enjoy sharing music with you and welcome your support in this process. I'm gonna ask them to show this slide. There you go. So as you see on the screens, you will see various avenues through which you can offer your support. There is also a golden box by the entrance or one of the entrances to this chapel in which cash donations can be placed. And if you are not able to contribute financially, we still appreciate you watching and following and keeping up with this on social media. So feel free to speak with any of us after the program to learn any more. And to all of our supporters, Day ones to the brand new, thank you. We will now end with a classical selection written by Felix Mendelssohn. In the last movement of his second piano trio, 
He includes a tune from a popular hymn, which we will leave as a mystery for you to figure out. So please listen closely. Thank you. 
Can anyone name the hymn they heard? Yes, praise God from whom all blessings flow. A special thank you once again to everyone for being here. And a very special thank you to the Salvation Army. So um, refreshments have been prepared and uh, they will be in the lobby for you at the close and exit um, of this program. We want to thank you so much for, again, coming out this evening. Again, some have traveled from near, some have traveled from far. For those who are online watching this live stream, we thank you for 
your time. We thank you for your support. We thank you for your commitment to the future of the Wilson Trio. <laughs> additionally, additionally, we want to thank you for those present for refraining from taking pictures and ensuring that your, your phones have been silenced. We very much appreciate you for that. And we want to let you know that at the close of the program, um, once it is over, that um, if you would like to take a picture after that time, please um, feel free to do so uh, for the brief moments afforded. At this time, um, we are going to close this program with a musical prayer and a request that you replace your applause with an amen. However, comma, before we actually close with this musical prayer, I'm going to ask that you join me to once again let out and express an applause to the Wilson Trio one more time. Please bow with me and let us pray in song.
Amen. Amen.